Hey guys, Jordan from Precondo here. Today I want to walk through the first condo launch of the year from uh, one of my favorite condo developers, Greywood. So we're going to walk through pricing, floor plans, what I like about the development, what I necessarily don't love. Uh, we're going to go through what I think about the thing as a whole and whether or not now is even a really good time to purchase. So let's get uh, let's top over to the computer, get right into this. All right. So Greywood has made a slide deck with a location, uh, location slide here, which is great. It's going to save me a lot of time. Usually I have to make these myself. So let's talk about the location. You're right at Church and Dundas, right? So south here uh, to north and then Dundas, you're right on the northeast corner of, uh, of Church and Dundas. So you're directly across the street from Toronto Metro. You're directly across the street from Ryerson. I'm going to call it Ryerson in this video, or I'm going to trip up on my words. Um, you have a streetcar. It's a very central location. So if you're wondering what, you know, how the marketing majors came up with the name Centricity, well, it's because it's in a great spot. You're directly in front of a 505, um, the streetcar stop, and you're only a five minute walk from the, from the Dundas uh, subway station as well. Okay. So as far as walk score, transit score, very high. Um, there's also some recently completed condo buildings in, in the uh, neighborhood, which give us a good idea of what rental rates look like. Um, so let me just zoom into them here. If you haven't seen this model, anything in blue is under construction. Anything in that sort of, I don't even know what to call that, like an orange, a pink is, um, is, is planned or, or approved. So this is Dundas Street here. This is Church Street here. And this building right here is, uh, is Centricity. And then worth noting, um, this building is uh, Fleur Condos by Menkes, which completed about a year ago. So I'm going to pull that up quickly here uh, just to look at the rental rates because they're very, very high. So you're seeing, you know, uh, two bedroom, 700 square foot with parking, uh, $33.50 a month. You're seeing, you know, a 450 square foot small unit on the second floor, no parking, $2,200 a month, which is like, yeah, so four sixty a foot in rent in December. Very high rental rates in this area um, because uh, you're directly across the street from from uh, from Ryerson. Okay, and on that note, we get into the basics of the development. So fifty three stories, almost six hundred units. Now, what's worth noting is there's almost no parking. There's very little parking, uh, about a ratio of one to ten, and that's fine. Look. If you're buying this as an investment, which given the location, honestly, you probably are. This probably isn't where you're where you're moving unless you're looking at one of the larger units. So here is the location, like I said, northeast corner of Church and Dundas uh, right here. Um, great spot. Uh, and let's talk about the developers. Something I always say is invest in a developer before a development. Um, and I think that I've always said that, but I think it's even more important today with rising costs of construction, contracting margins, developers are making less money than they've ever made. Um, and there's uncertainty in economic conditions. As a result, you want to be very careful who you invest with. Greywood is fantastic. If you've been following my channel, you know, I love them. We did a ton at Scout, their project in the junction, and they built the, uh, the Ritz Carlton, little known building downtown, uh, one of my favorite condo buildings downtown. Um, and of course they've done, uh, they, they have a ton in the pipeline. So over 6,000 units in the pipeline. Let's keep going. Won't go through this in too much detail, guys. Priceless floor plans, brochure, all that good stuff. Link in the description. Okay. Um, you've got a spin studio, a large, almost half a floor of gym space, yoga studio, outdoor yoga area. You have your co-working space, which is half a floor. So that's awesome. You've got co-working space, meeting spaces, little offices, breakout rooms, that kind of thing. Children's play area, indoor party room huge outdoor terrace uh, with tons of seating areas. Uh, let's talk about the floor plate. Floor plate is exactly what you would expect, okay? The building is not architecturally groundbreaking and that's fantastic as an investment unit. Um, you know, it's it's exactly what you'd expect to see. Efficient floor plans, very good use of space, very little wasted space. Studios starting in the high 500s. Okay, so entry price on this building is very low. So despite market conditions today, I still think it'll probably move pretty quickly. Uh, because of the long completion, 2027 occupancy, because of the low deposit structure, 15% before occupancy, and because it's by a really trusted developer, right? So junior one bedrooms starting in the low 600s, one bedrooms in the mid 700s, and two bedrooms in the high nines. Deposit structure, like I said, you know, in today's market conditions, developers, what can they do? They can't lower their, their pre-construction prices because pre-construction is priced as a function of cost and cost to build has gone up, which is part of the, in part, why I'm so bullish on Toronto in the long run. Um, but they can do things like better deposit structures, uh, better incentives. This is no, 
no uh, no slouch in that department. Greywood has made it as attractive as it can possibly be. Estimated completion 2027. Most likely you're looking at a uh, probably late 27, early 28 completion, right? They got a little slide here on within three kilometers of centricity, obviously. Toronto's a tech hub, right? The fastest growing tech hub in North America and certainly the largest tech hub in Canada. Um, why? Well, because it's cheaper to pay people here. Office space is cheaper. It's a great place to expand for American companies. And there's tons of qualified tech workers in the city, which leads us into is now a good time to buy? This is a great question uh, that people ask me every single day. And all I can tell you is I'm not an economist. I can't predict rates. My view on the short term, like the very short term outlook of the Toronto market is it's entirely rate dependent. However, all I can tell you for sure is it's a better time today than it was uh, today last year, right? Prices are lower or incentives are higher. Um, if you're looking on the resale market or the assignment market, prices are definitely lower. If you're looking at the pre-construction market, incentives are definitely better. You're getting things that you wouldn't normally get, caps you wouldn't normally get, fee deletions you wouldn't normally get, all kinds of good things. But really what it boils down to is what is the long-term outlook? Because if you're buying pre-construction, look, you shouldn't be looking at a three-year time horizon, right? You shouldn't be looking to assignment flip these things. You should be looking 10 years out. If you're looking 10 years out, I'm still as bullish as I've ever been, if not more. Part of the reason for that is what we're going to get into here. So this is the blue line is the launch price of a per, the launch price per square foot of condo buildings in Etobicoke over time. As you can see, they only go up. Okay, and the reason is because cost to build goes up. So we haven't seen contraction in labor cost yet. We haven't seen um, materials come down very much at all. We haven't seen land cost get hit yet. So you know it's more expensive than it's ever been to build a condo. In addition, you got the city of Toronto charging developers 49% increase in development charges. You have inclusionary zoning coming this year. So lots of reasons why condos are getting more expensive to build, not less. And then what's really interesting is if you look at the TREB numbers, it's no secret that the market's not doing so hot right now. In fact, volume is incredibly, incredibly low. But when you look at certain asset classes, they're doing better than others, right? So if you look at the year over year change in December, 2022, for detached in the 905, you can see it's down 16%. And this gives me a little feeling of vindication because you go back through my previous market updates last year and the year prior, mid, sort of mid COVID market updates, what you'll find is I was saying these price runs in Whitby, in, in Barrie, in Hamilton are unsustainable. They're getting far too extended over Toronto's prices. So you see, you know, detached in the suburbs and exurbs getting hit really hard, holding pretty strong, only down four four percent in the four one six. So in Toronto proper. Meanwhile, Toronto condos are up one percent, so roughly flat year over year. So they're holding up the best because they they appreciated the least through COVID, and because you're seeing return to office and they are price floor products. So as rates go up, people can afford less. Well, maybe they could they they were looking at, you know, product in um in Whitby, or maybe they were looking at, you know, townhomes, and now they're looking at condos, because that's what they can afford based on new, new, uh, new interest rates. Because if if your buying power is down 30%, then price is being down 16% doesn't really help you that much. Now, this is why I'm really bullish, your population growth is at absolute all time highs. I mean, this is great. This is the craziest chart I've seen in, in the past few months. Uh, unbelievable immigration levels. And of course, liberals are bumping up immigration targets, they just bumped up immigration targets into the next uh, three years. So uh, immigration at all time high, at the same time, we are seeing housing supply or housing launches contract. So we're seeing new supply contract. So I'm gonna pull open this CBC article where uh, yours truly was quoted cheesy, I know, but I'm not going to focus on my quotes, what I'm going to focus on is this investors, are scaling back because of rate hikes, it will probably end up with 10,000 fewer units launched for presale this year, speaking about 2022, um, and then slowdowns later in 2023 as well. So we're seeing less new condo launches, less new freehold launches as uh, developers have to hit their sales targets. If they can't hit their sales targets, they just don't launch the product. And if, if they don't launch the product today, at least with condos, then that means less new condos are coming to the market in five years. So at the same time as all time high immigration, we are seeing um, developers not launch products. So this will probably be a pretty slow year for launches. Part of the reason why I like centricity um, is it's coming out early in the year. It's coming out in a pocket that's ripe for redevelopment. That's seeing a ton of redevelopment. You know, like, look, the, the church in Dundas area, not my, it's not Yorkville, right? It's not my number one in terms of neighborhood, but 
It's also priced accordingly. So it's a good entry level investment if someone's looking for the type of product that will always rent out given its proximity to Ryerson. Employment growth, obviously everybody knows we just posted great employment numbers November through December. Ontario up 42,000 jobs, most of which in the private sector. And economists put out a report, most livable cities in the world. Canada topped, sweeped the top four. So you got Calgary, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal. So, you know, some people are saying, I don't know if we can keep up these immigration numbers. Look, we're one of the best. It's no secret to any of us who live here. One of the best cities in the world, right? With tons of opportunity. So I don't think that's a, a realistic um, it, look, I think if we want to hit our immigration targets, very easy to do so. We remain one of the best cities in the world to live in. And we're just now getting recognition. Like if you look at the price difference between Toronto and some of these other uh, noteworthy major metros around the world, we're still we're still dirt cheap, Vancouver and Toronto, right? Um, so that's all I have for this video, guys. Uh, if you want more information on Center City, link is in the description. All right, you get the price list, floor plans, all that good stuff. Um, but either way, I'm going to put on a market update uh, going through the markets stats and, and this sort of this sort of content a little bit more in detail later this week. So like and subscribe and I will see you guys uh, later this week, next week, something like that.